asking you a question. What do you want to be in the future? Ano nga ba ang gusto niyong maging? Since I won't hear you, dear Athenians, you may write down your answers in the comment section below. Hopefully, answers are being written now. Itcha-check yan ng ating OSA team mamaya. So for now, let's hold on to those answers of yours and we'll get back to that in a little while. Alright? Before we proceed, um, let me first introduce myself. I am Christian Vivero, a graduate of BS Business Administration, major in Financial Management and Accounting from Batch 2016. At present, I'm working at the Development Bank of the Philippines, or DBP, as a Relationship Manager, handling top government and corporate accounts. For those who don't know, DBP, as the country's premier government financial institution, stands at the forefront of the government's effort to hasten nationwide development. In life, we get to make big decisions. I guess part of these big decisions is you deciding to enroll in Ateneo. Choosing Ateneo out of other universities in the city or in the country Sometimes, we forgot that there are also these small decisions that we usually ignore or don't put attention to. And I think it is important to pause and go back to these small decisions or steps. And that's what we're going to do right now. I want to bring you back five years ago to the time I first entered the pillars of the Ateneo de Naga University and reminisce the decision or choices I made in my four years of Ignatian education. It is through ORSEM, a three-day orientation seminar, where we were first introduced to the Ateneo, its culture, its lofty ideals, and its mission and vision. It is also through ORSEM that I was able to recognize Ateneo's gift to its students that Ateneo offers not just academic excellence, but a hallmark of holistic development. With this, I came to realize that I should not spend my entire years in Ateneo on just seating on its rooms and attend classes. I must also learn outside the four corners of the classroom and get myself involved on diverse programs and activities, both inside and outside the university. Back then, I am a student, but I thought that it won't also hurt if I become a student leader, a student volunteer, or a working student. And so, I decided to study and learn and get involved at the same time. And during my four fruitful years of stay in Ateneo, I made three choices. Three choices that helped me experience the fullness of being an Athenian, as well as prepared me to face the real world after college. And please allow me to share these three choices to you, fellow Athenians. The first one is that I choose to try. They say that the world offers no guarantee. There's nothing sure in this world, and I think I believe in that, even during this pandemic and with the slow arrival of the vaccines in the country, we are still not sure on when this global crisis will come to an end. So 
if the universe owes you nothing, then you are left with no choice but to try. At first, I was also hesitant to try. I was hesitant to join a school organizations. I thought that joining extracurricular activities might take a toll on my academics. However, my awesome experience as a freshman reminded me of the great people and groups who evidently worked hard to put such a successful event. The committee members, the facilitators, the MCs, these people, and the aspiration to be someone like them motivated me to try. And so, I attended recruitment talks and submit orgs application. And fortunately, at my first year, I was accepted as a student volunteer in the College Guidance Center's PCSKB group. Had I not tried, I won't be able to facilitate or some discussions. I will not be able to experience hosting a full-packed gymnasium or covered court. I won't be able to organize activities and seminars like the ORSEM. This choice to try and apply for PCSKV not only opened a lot of opportunities, but allowed me to understand the value of resilience and tenacity. Yes, we need to try, but we need also to accept that in every time we try, there's an equivalent possibility of failure. But this shouldn't stop us from trying. I myself faced a lot of failure. Your instructor at one point or another have failed. Everyone fails, including the billionaires. But what is important is that you know how to firmly grip on your desire to try. And they say that the secret to resilience and tenacity is humility, pagpapakumbaba. Humility that means knowing and accepting the fact that you are not that good yet, accepting the fact that you need to learn, to improve every day. And I tell you, dear Athenians, it pays to be humble. Even the Bible says it very well, the humble will be exalted. So the first decision I've made is to try. Pinili kong sumubok. The second decision I want to highlight is I choose to commit because the entire process of self-realization does not end on trying. You need to commit and stand by this commitment. It is also imperative that when you choose to try, you need to expect that things will not be easy. You need to commit in order to succeed. Aside from being part of PCSKV, I've also joined several curricular and non-curricular organizations. I've been elected as one of the officers of the Junior Philippine Institute of Accountants in my freshman and sophomore years. I was also an active core group member of the Gabay Scholars Organization, the official scholars organization of the university. And I also served as a lecturer and commentator at the Shrine and Parish of the Our Lady of Peña Francia. Indeed, there were lots of things in my plate that time. So I've come to ask myself, why am I doing all of this? And a resounding answer echoed, it is for a purpose greater than myself, to be of service to and with others. I decided to commit because I love what I do. I love to be of service. So hopefully, as you grow in your service to Ateneo, you will also find that purpose, that fire that shall keep you aflame and keeps you going. Passion that will drive you to commit for greater purpose. So choose to commit. Piliing mangako at manindigan. And the third and last decision I've made is to continue. I choose to continue. Pinili kong magpatuloy. They say that in life, 
it's always easy to stop rather than continue. Don't you agree? And for sure, this is applicable to college life, particularly in your org's life. With all the adversities that you face today, including the pandemic, the online class made even harder by low internet connection, your family and personal problems in life, all these tribulations that seems to be an ending makes the option to stop more viable than to continue. For sure, there are more problems to come, but I hope that you remain steadfast in your mission and remember the reasons on why you choose to try and why did you commit at the same time. And you'll see that at the end, everything would be worth it. I too faced hardships in college. My mama was diagnosed with toxic goiter in 2014. And so she needed to stop working. And in order to provide for my family, I started to work as a part-time instructor and tutor in a Montessori school and a tutorial center respectively. With this, I needed to juggle my academics and orgs life with my side hustle, all at the same time. But despite all of these, I choose to continue. I've said to myself that good days shall come and true enough, wonderful things slowly unfolded. As I reached my junior and senior years, more opportunities were unlocked. In 2014, my full scholarship application was accepted by the Christong Hari Foundation founded by Father Joel Tabor. In 2015, I was able to make it to the semi-finals round of the Mark Prof's search for the top 25 young marketing leaders of the Philippines where I've met a lot of outstanding and inspiring graduating students. In the same year, I also qualified to the Philippine Model Congress held at the Senate Hall of the Philippines. I also had the honor to be one of Ateneo's representative to the 7th Interactive Youth Forum held at the La Carmela de Boracay, Aklan in 2016. Another college experience that is very memorable to me is when I was chosen as one of the voices of OSA's public address system. Had I decided to stop, I won't experience all these formative opportunities. Fast forward to the week after my graduation in March 19, 2016. I was chosen to be part of the 10th batch of the DBT's Management Associates Program, a one-year extensive program that aims to train and develop brilliant minds that will hold key bank positions in the future as a development banker. Currently, I work as a relationship manager under the marketing group of the bank. Together with my teammates, we assist top government and private clients achieve and meet their business and financial requirements through provision of far-reaching bank products and services. And truly, I can say that my Ignatian education helped me prepare in the corporate job I am in right now. I am also proud to say that my trainings and experiences in joining college organizations and activities influenced me to still be active and be involved in my workplace activities, hosting events, serving the church, and organizing collaborative activities are just some of the things that I still do today. So I tell you, whenever you feel giving up, be it in your studies or org's life, remember the reason why you started, and from there, choose. To continue. At sa lahat pa ng tatahaki ninyo, nawa ay piliin nyo ring sumubok, piliin manindigan, at piliin magpatuloy. Now, we go back to the question I posted earlier. Who really do you want to be in the future? Ano nga ba ang gusto nyong maging? Can it be that the answer to this question is not a profession? but a decision. A decision to try, to commit, 
and to continue. Right now, I've come to realize that I just don't want to be a banker. What I really want to do is to contribute to society's goal of nation building. I am a development banker. That is my present work. But what I am continuously working on is to stay in love on what I do. One person says it very well. It's not about where you go, but how you do wherever you go. And wherever you go, choose to do good. As I end, I want to remind you that we Ignatian leaders are meant for greatness. And don't let anyone say otherwise. Sabi nga ng mga millennials, you only live once. Hashtag YOLO. But we need to remember that YOLO is not to get wasted over an overnight drinking session. YOLO is not going to bars or clubs to party overnight or even until the morning. The true meaning of YOLO is making a difference. It is making an impact. Hashtag YOLO is realizing how great you are and what God intended you to be. And that is to be great leaders and members of the society. You only live once, so be the best that you can be. Thank you. My name is Maria Shima A. Haoshan. I'm a proud alumna of the Ateneo College of Education Batch 2012. After finishing my bachelor's degree with English as my specialization, I taught for four years in the Ateneo de Naga College of Arts and Sciences, which is now the College of Humanities and Social Sciences, before going back to Legazpi, my home city, and now teaching at the Bicol University College of Education. When I was a student of Ateneo, I joined various curricular and extracurricular organizations. As an education student, I took an active role in the Samahang Pidapagtaguyod ng Edukasyong Filipino, or STEP. I also became the associate editor and later the editor-in-chief of Kaduno, the official student publication of the College of Education. During my time, we launched Sural, the literary folio of the publication. I also later took part in university student politics by winning a seat in the Student Congress of the Supreme Student Government. Being a scholar from first year, I was also active in the Gabay Scholars Organization and even joined, and surprisingly, one as Miss Gabay 2010, if I'm not mistaken. I was also a volunteer reading facilitator of the Pathways Youth Group, a volunteer at the College Guidance Center, especially during ORSEM and group growth activities, and of the chaplaincy office. I was also one of the first members of the Ateneo Literary Association. I may have as well graduated with a BS org degree with all my involvements. But none of those that I have mentioned were ever in my plans when I started college. I was maintaining two scholarships, so I would have simply focused on academics just like when I was in high school. But my classmates, who later became close friends, and the senior education students, my Atas and Kuyas then, encouraged me to join their orgs, and later, I also found myself looking at recruitment groups and deciding which ones I wanted to join. 
being part of at least one org was apparently an influential part of the student culture. And though I was an, though I was an introvert, even until now, I found myself swept by this org culture. Initially, my intention was only to teach myself how to mingle the different kinds of people. And this I was able to achieve. I reckon that if I were to be an effective and flexible teacher in the future, I needed to start early. So I thought of org life as my practice and purposeful socialization. But I actually got more than what I intended. I realized that orgs did not only exist to satisfy students' need for belonging. I remember listening to stories of the high school students we visited during our reading sessions in pathways, their dreams to enter college and be successful, or the times we woke up very early to assist in the Simbang Gabi and to serve breakfast to church goers after the mass, or even the turbulence in the student congress and the SSG because of differing political views and ways of going forward. From these experiences, I learned that orgs existed for some purpose bigger than the org itself. Be it the SSG, the student publication, the chaplaincy volunteer pool, or the pathways youth group. From my experiences in org life, good and bad, I have developed my work ethic. I've also learned to strive for something bigger than myself in everything that I do, to do my best no matter how trivial the task may be, because I believe in a greater purpose and my contribution to it. The Athenian org life has also taught me to be grounded as it opened my eyes to current realities. I joined as a naive student who just wanted to know how to communicate with people and possibly establish useful networks within and outside the university. But it helped me have a more humane and balanced perspective. While it made me see the need for a noble purpose, it also taught me hard work and pragmatism. As I was a few months away from graduation, I took on the We Can Do Anything project, which is a fundraising movement of the international singer Apple the App and the Dinoy and Cory Foundation, launched to help public schools build classrooms in view of the addition of senior high school in the K-12 curriculum. It was indeed a noble undertaking to which the orgs under the Ateneo Directorate of Student Organization or ADSO initially committed. From that engagement, I learned that it is not enough to have a purpose, but also the means to achieve it. This involved actively strategizing and campaigning. It was one thing to enlist participation and attract interest and support, but sustaining them was another thing. Also, I learned to accept what I would not openly admit before, that orgs or any noble endeavor needs money, needs funding to keep it running. It was so difficult for me to keep money coming in for the fundraising, as well as keep people who can help also find money for our operations. Despite the odds and challenges, the whole experience ended well with the school chapter of the movement being able to send its modest net profit to the foundation in support of its aim. That last bittersweet org experience before stepping out into the so-called real world again taught me to balance idealism with the realities that exist. And it has strengthened further my resolve to always search and work for a higher purpose, which at every situation or moment has to be discerned carefully. As a teacher for almost 10 years now, 
I have greatly benefited not only from my academic training, but also from my experiences in the different student organizations I joined in college. I actually served as the advisor of the University Student Council of Dita University for one school year. And I'm currently the technical advisor of The Mentor, which is a student publication of the DA College of Education. In these engagements, I see the need to be present and to process the students' experiences just as I would in my classes, both in the senior high school and college levels. I have always believed that the school is a microcosm of society, that everything we experience as a student is but a taste of what we will face as adults after college. I was actually able to confirm that now that I am a young professional. My student life was enriched by the highs and lows, and even by the ordinary and uneventful moments of my time as an officer or a member of my organizations. I have used these as my resources for guiding my students into arriving at their own discoveries on the meaning of their experiences, their struggles and triumphs. My experiences as a student taught me to be reflective, resilient, and realistic in my personal and professional relationships and goals. And I know my own students will also gain their own meaningful takeaways. I look back at all of my memories as a college student of the Ateneo de Naga. Particularly, I remember all the fun and difficult moments I shared with my ordinates and all the groups I joined. Cliche as it may seem, but it's true that I wouldn't be the person I am now if I didn't dare to get out of my comfort zone and explore the world within the Ateneo student community. Gratefully, I say it was all worth it. 